we steal. So you sort out these answers into those that can be applicable to the rest of the, of the uh, uh, um, community and those which are TBU, true but useless, okay? You can't steal and you can't rely on people to send money. But breastfeeding, using mosquito necks, boiling the water, more fruits and vegetables can be applicable. So positive deviance is a great idea when you have a nutritional problem. Is instead of the half cup, as, as, our, our, as Rala said, looking at the half cup full, look at the solutions, and these are community valid. So my views on how you actually go and look at nutritional challenges, not problems, is by looking at the people who succeed. And that's the key thing in positive deviance. Um, more practically, so that's when you do an intervention, I'm just going to uh, give you what is really considered as the, the answers. And there's not one answer. One size does not fit all, okay? So the first is reducing rural poverty. Even though you might think people are growing more in the countryside, they do worse when there's a food problem. We've got to increase agricultural production, and Richard can help us with that maybe to finding how to uh, um, use better seeds, stronger seeds. You had the Green Revolution, which was fantastic here, and we should come on more. Um, distributing food, for instance, there need to be better transport. That's in transport policy. Can food come from its production to be distributed? Nutritional education, again, in, in women, and food fortification and supplementation, like putting it in the flour. Put iron, folic acid, B vitamins in the flour, and then it, it's, it's uh, distributed. Supplementation to pregnant women with folic acid and things. That's one of my heroes. I haven't got time to go into what he really did by improving the yield and saving countries from mass poverty and mass uh, undernutrition. Control of communicable and non-communicable diseases. This is the idea of for nutrition to work, it's got to, the motor has got to be okay. It's got to be able to use it. The body has to be healthy. Communication and transportation. Control the birth rate. Now, that's, that's not so simple. We visited a family planning association here. And we know what happened with vasectomy. Uh, there's a lot going on here, and this is not easy, and people have got to take up the challenge socially, ethically, and political considerations. By the way, the most important thing I haven't put in there is political will. If it's not at the local and at the central government level to change, to improve the food octane of the people, it's not going to go. Um, various uh, projects that you might do here, um, on the macro, the intermediate, and the micro, agricultural trade policy, birth control programs, I'm reading down here, use of fertilizer, breastfeeding coaching, food stamps, safe motherhood, immunizations, okay, latrine constructions. I'll just tell you, we did latrine construction and sanitation in the slums of Korogocho in Nairobi in kids, five to ten year olds, and just by teaching them to wash their hands, we improved their nutritional status because they were aware of food, they got less disease, just simple things, low tech. I'm sorry this is the initiative and the inno uh, innovation, but sometimes we have to begin from the bottom up, and washing hands is a very important, very low tech, but it does work depending on your population. This is the women, this is quite interesting, microfinance, you know, is to get them cooperatives to buy a bit of uh, cattle to work uh, 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 and provide money for buying food. And then there's food storage. So the story is coming uh, gradually to the end. Who's involved with this uh, six-point star? Well, food quality and safety has to be, uh, it's rather important. Okay, storage facilities doesn't get moldy. It's properly uh, case cared for. Household security, not only in the markets, but at home. Is there refrigerators? Is, is there ice boxes? Okay. Food doesn't go off, go moldy. Capacity to care, that's particularly dealing with the handicapped, the elderly, and breastfeeding. Very important to encourage. Okay. If the women don't go out to work, uh, uh, there's always that. Micronutrients, is there enough of the iron iodine and vitamin A. 
No to cut down on malaria, communicable diseases, lifestyle. People walk more, people don't eat too much. And then the two things which are very important, you have to know what the needs are. You've got to monitor the nutrition. There should be periodic health surveys on how people's height, weights, do they get enough to eat. Then you know where to make the policy decisions. And then you've got to incorporate it into public policy uh, together with the politicians. Okay, many governments involved. That's another way of saying my initial uh, sentence from Phil James. There's human capital depending on education, poverty reduction, improving productivity, and economic growth. So really it's very hard to take one part out, but if you remember that nutrition is the fuel, I think you know where we are coming from. And that's what we should say, food security is a fundamental human right. I look forward to working together with the ORF jointly so that we can improve the octane fuel of, uh, of our people here. Thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Bhagwan Advani. Um, listening to you, I, I, I get a sense that uh, you're, not, you're a little concerned about either the lack or the adequacy of protein in the Indian vegetarian diet. Have I got your sense right? It could be a problem. And uh, the question is, you know, well, I'm for, you know, if I'm not here, if I wasn't because of, 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 a, of the vegetarian incident, the white of the eggs if it is excellent first-class protein without eating meat. Uh, but it's, again, a little bit more expensive and maybe not so uh, uh, available. And therefore, one would have to make it up with the pulses, which you can do, but you've got to mix and match, as it were, the lentils and the beans and the pulses. Which are the lentils, uh, if you use it in a category, which are the lentils which have a high protein content or... Uh, I don't do know the individual from, from this part of the world. I, would, I can look that up from a nutritionist, but it can be worked out. And it's not too difficult. But I don't want to, from the top of my head, give it to you. Yeah, okay. Sir, okay. sir I want to draw your kind attention. Uh, my name is R.B. Purohi. I am a consumer activist. And... Uh, we at a Consumer Guidance Society were following consumer international guidelines on nutritional junk food, etc. And we do a lot of awareness programs on this junk food. And uh, I just wanted to correct your uh, uh, that vegetarianism in India is uh, is associated with lacto-vegetarian. It is not simply a vegetarian. I know, I know. And uh, right. I think uh, that takes care of uh, the protein requirement and uh, other other requirements. You, so you think there's not a problem? I think it's not a problem. I'm 71. I don't think there is a problem in being a vegetarian. Okay, okay. Well, if, uh, if people can eat eggs and milk and it's available, that's fine. You can easily do it. That's it. I'm Manoj Joglekar. A uh, question I would like to ask, uh, again, I'm not expert in the field of nutrition, so based on my perception, I'm asking. Somehow, if you look at the Indian uh, lifestyle, you see there is a deep-rooted family system and people prefer, when they are in family, their nutritional uh, requirements are taken care of because the, there are two meals and, and Indian square meal as it is seen, it includes rice and uh, yes. flour and it is, it is called as a balanced diet. But yes. due to urbanization, many Indians or large number of people are coming to city when they are in city. Either they leave their families behind or uh, they cannot, they, because of hectic lifestyle. Yes. And compared to maybe European and American lifestyle where people are more, uh, uh, they eat raw food in more uh, amount. Indians are uh, prone to eating cooked food, well cooked food. And when in cities when they cannot get the cooked food, their lifestyle or their nutrition style they, uh, gets imbalanced very much. So do you think there can be any solution or... Well, You've raised two points. One is about eating with families, which is terribly important. A family that eats together stays together. Really important, and, uh, and the, the social cohesiveness and the safer factor is excellent. Now, with regard to people coming to cities, something I didn't mention is the importance of street food. People eating out and, and making the good choices where how, how much the oil has been used and reused and reused and how people do it. The hygiene problem on that... 
and people who are not in their homes, who are working or maybe sending home money, uh, are greatly dependent on, on, on these street foods. And that's a major challenge because of the economic considerations, obviously, uh, it's a form of livelihood for people, but do they make the right choices of what they put in and to try and, uh, and legislate on that? I don't think you can do it by legislation. I really don't know. Not just the poor people, but yes. even uh, people from higher income groups where they are away from their families, yes. they don't know what to give. Even, even they can afford to buy maybe fruit juices and other nutritional foods. They simply don't know or they uh, have the very uh, need of education among this class. Yes. I mean, the, the principles, and again, this is in theory. It's, uh, we're talking about amounts, variety, and balance. These are the three things. The amounts are okay. The um, variety, i.e. fruits, vegetables, proteins, carbohydrates of the dal, and the, and the naan, and what, and what you have, which can be very good. And then the, the balance between them, okay? Which, now, that, with regard, you're right, of course, but who's got time for the education? All this has to, should be done in schools. I don't know if it's actually... Uh, part of the school curriculum. I heard that cricket isn't part of the school curriculum. I'm very disappointed to hear this, watching it. But is health education part? Is nutrition part of school education? This is where the impact has to be. Because by the time that finished school, you've lost it. People are too busy trying to earn a livelihood. Or yeah. My name is Joseph Martin. Please tell us, sir, which plants can be grown in the houses, oh. in buildings, as is done in many places, yes. so that people can get very good nutrition in their homes? That, that this is the idea and of... Second, second question is, please tell us which are the fruits or the plants which reduce obesity? Oh, Thank you, I don't sir. know about... Okay. <laughs> fruits to reduce obesity, I'd be a millionaire. Listen, kitchen gardens, you would know uh, the local. It's a very good, important thing if you can grow... Whatever it is, I mean, I'm not, it depends how, how, what is the area, but you can, can grow potatoes, tomatoes. I don't know what is regionally acceptable, but that's a very important uh, comment. With regard to the fruits, and you'd, you'll have to help me there. I'm not. On, I've only been here for four days. Um, with regard to fruits against uh, obesity, there's no such thing. Obesity is about amounts of what you eat. I don't, uh, fruits and vegetables are good, and we say you should have five different colors a day. So instead of talking about calories in English, talk about calories, okay? Have different colors. And you're, you're pretty good on that. I mean, I've, I've seen it really, really lovely. Um, you're doing very... And look, most, most Indians really are... I mean, uh, the obesity... Uh, apart from the very, uh, you know, in, in certain areas, the, the obesity economic uh, uh, situation is sort of under control, better than in other countries. Madam. Uh, hello. My name is Katrina Kupaya. I'm a research fellow here. Okay, in off, uh, yes. And I would like to ask you, um, so today with uh, mass uh, agricultural production, we have yeah. a lot of chemicals put in food basically, and that is going to affect also nutrition. So what is your view on the subject, let's say pesticides versus biological farming? GM foods. I'm a GM food man, I must tell you. We've been doing GM food by, uh, you know, by natural selection for ages, so we're just giving it a hand and moving it on. But it's a very interesting cultural thing. For instance, I told you about, um, this is an Israeli initiative, which is really quite something. It's called golden rice. Big problem, vitamin A deficiency. They got rice to manufacture vitamin A, gave it for free to the world, I think it's in Indonesia actually, the actual, where they distribute all the rice species. It would have been, and they did trials in certain people and it really improved vitamin A. But when they gave it for free, nobody would eat it. Why? It was yellow. People liked their rice white. This was a cultural thing, and yet it, it didn't work. So we have to be very careful about that. Um, about pesticides now. Well, of course, GM, like with the BT things, you know, it's, it's, it, it's designed so you don't need to use so many so much pesticides. If you 
one. So you're going to have to balance it out. I don't know what the legal uh, requirements for GM in, 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 in here is. Is it allowed or not allowed? It's not allowed, like in the EU. Okay, okay. It's still, um, debate, so yes. it's still in debate. I would be very, and I know people want to come and debate this. I, can, I think it, the, the benefits are grossly outweigh the, the deficits. Of that. So, but the other thing is about uh, eating the fruits and vegetables. It is probably better to eat fruits and vegetables, perhaps with your pesticides, relying on your Cytopro D450 in your liver, rather than buying processed food. Processed food is, is not as it's not, not good, so we're going to have to do that. But the most important thing is exercise. Remember this one, there's another takeaway message. Fat and fit is better than being lean and lazy. <laughs> this was a supplement Katrina's question. I would like to ask like it's not the issue of uh, GM food, but particularly in developing countries where there are no such norms about the industrial pollution. Lot of pollutants are being uh, thrown in the agriculture lands and because of that an overuse of fertilizers and the entire landscape, particularly in Punjab, it's been visible that uh, the same land has got polluted so much that all these chemicals are coming in the fruits and rather the fruits and vegetables that are uh, helpful for nutrition, they are started causing the problem. It's not an issue of whether to use GM food or not. So how to get well this is uh, control, passive control, this is the government responsibility to to inspect and to test environmental agencies and have people also to enforce the law. In most countries they just don't have unfortunately, I'm afraid. So we go back to what the Roman says, caveat emptor, you have to be careful where to try and learn. I'm against organic foods, they might be okay, but it's not a solution for society. You can't, and they're more expensive, you can't do that. It's not fair, we're not just talking about the elite. If you're going to make a solution, it has to be organic. Okay. <coughs> Yes, my name is Asha Ibnani. I'm a consumer activist. Oh, and, <laughs> yes. and I noticed you were talking about the iodine deficiency. Yes. And correct me if I'm wrong, but do, does it affect mainly the people in hilly areas, those yes. living along yes. the coastline, because yes. maybe they eat fish or the vegetables yes, that and all that are grown that that would help? And you also mentioned about the salt, the iodized salt. Yes, iodized salt is the way to go. But I'm very sorry to say that in India, they sell now only iodized salt they've been selling. But... Well, that's, not, that's good, actually. Yes, it's supposed to be good, but in India, one doesn't know how much of iodine they're putting in it. Oh. To, oh. For how long it has it. been kept, for how long it has been kept, we've got uh, taken packets of salt and have them tested. And the, one doesn't know, so you only only iodine salt is available. But where is the iodine in it? It just doesn't help the people, even those who are staying along the coastline. No, or right. yes, that is, it's a very sorry. Good. So this because, is an example, madam, of doing a traditional survey. Yes. You have to do it, and you have to put some money in, and you have to solve right. these areas in the hills and by the and you have to know what the size of the problem is. Number right. one. Yes. Then you now we can talk about what the jobs do. The next thing is then you can ask the people who don't have iron and should say what are they doing and what, where they're getting the iron from. Otherwise, sort of it, it shouldn't affect the half the shelf life. And normally it is the iodine, iodinized salt that helps. That helps. Yes, and another thing that I'd like to say that he brought it up. Now, you were, it was just so that you were here for four days. But it's very sad. If one were to travel by train and along the the tracks, the railway tracks, there's some land over there, and people are growing vegetables over there, like they have spinach, and they're yes, growing yes. a whole lot of those. But it's so sad when you see the water that they're using from there are just pulled out of drains, and, and they are, they've got these pumps, and they're watering those. And in the, those drains, Lord alone knows what all is in it, all industrial water is there, which has been absorbed by these, the greens or the other plants, and that's what we are eating. And what we eat, we don't know what goes on over there. It's sick. Maybe those who travel by road, they don't see it, no. but if they were to see, they're not going to buy any I greens. I want to say something about that, because you're obviously right, that means good. But the big picture is good. The 
life expectancy in India and most of the other world is improving. So something that we are doing is, is okay. And we're trying everywhere. There's a will to do it. So it is improving. It could be done better. And there's obviously lots of parts of society that you've got to follow and, and help uh, more than others. But okay, some things we're doing well. Now you mustn't attribute to everything from food. Although food is important, it's not the only thing. It's, it's, it's exercise, I said, on the one hand. It's spirituality on the other hand. It's lifestyle. What's the meaning here before? What's uh, my writing for lifestyle? In Russian, it's not Rzhezny. What's it in... Uh, it's, it's called... Givenchay. Givenchay. That's That's what we're talking about. And food is important. But not the other. So, Sorry, Mano. 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 Yes. yes. Um, I'm Dr. Maya Kruplani. I'm a practicing psychologist. My query is on the psychological uh, aspect that we've been talking here about obesity, which definitely has uh, psychological underplay. And, you know, when you were talking about uh, showing your slides regarding the different countries, uh, America has a lot of psychological problems. I've worked in America for a while. And there it was, I think, 44.2% which you showed. Japan, you said, is, is better, yeah. But we also have statistics or uh, research studies at least a few years back showing that Japan had the greatest number of suicides. Uh, well, I, I'm just wondering, it is my query, it's, it's just... A, it's not that, it's not that. No, no, I'm not talking about fat. I'm just saying obesity is linked to psychological issues. So in your, in your studies, did you find anything of psychological uh, disturbances? You've worked also on anorexia nervosa. You've worked on yes. so many other issues. I, just just, well, a, just if you could enlighten a bit. The major public health problem actually is a problem of the social economic status rather than the psychological status. Okay. Now, there are cases. Suicide in Japan is a very sad business. It has to do with the achievement of society, it's particularly in the young you don't, don't reach the grace. It's a terrible thing. But it's not necessarily, I don't think, related to the obesity. So I just repeat that in the majority of countries, we're talking about the obesity in developed countries. It's to do with the, the lower social education, uh, lack of education, and, 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 and wrong uh, uh, health choices with regard to food. So you Some people do have psychological problems with obesity, but not the majority. So you didn't find an uh, uh, overlay or a very highly predominant factor of a psychological predominance? Yeah. Yeah. Anorexia, of course, okay. is much more. That's a sign. Okay. If you have anorexia, you're very yeah, You do. Yeah, you do. do. It's an infectious disease. It's a high... Uh, yes. Hi, Dr. Barry. My name is uh, Malik Mamani. Uh, to reintroduce myself. Yes. Uh, I see a very strong relation between uh, the three sectors of... Uh, uh, tradition, sports, and agriculture. Uh, of course, uh, the three vertices, uh, if, if uh, there are perpendiculars drawn from uh, the either side to the vertex, I think uh, women are the central point uh, where the three perpendiculars meet. If we consider the state of Haryana in India, uh, which was one of the principal beneficiaries of uh, the Green Revolution. Yes. Uh, we see uh, a very high consumption of milk, A, and dry fruits, principally uh, almonds. Nuts. Uh, uh, yes, yes, indeed. And uh, uh, pulses are, of course, uh, 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 regular and uh, must in that region. Yes. Uh, we consider, if, if we see how agriculture has evolved in the state, how the state government over the years has supported sports, and how women have emerged as the front runners and the chief achievers uh, in sports. In sports? In sports. In that state. Yes. Um, I know various cultures uh, are, are defined and have strong tones in different states in India. 
What's the name of that state again? How? It's called Haryana. It's uh, the and state neighboring Punjab Delhi. and, and, and Delhi. Delhi. That's very interesting uh, observation. I'm very impressed because the women I said in women's education was the best protector of what was going on with uh, maternal child health and everything else. And, and child. So I'm, uh, I can understand that. That's a very good... And uh, let case. me stress that the state of Haryana is considered very orthodox. That's very unusual. But I'm quite still. surprised. And that's, so in there, the women are the center of tradition, states, uh, sports and agriculture. They have emerged as the chief achievers. Well, that's a positive deviance. Uh, we have to copy what's going on in our... How can and the consumption... By the way, nuts, thank you for reminding me, nuts are extremely good. Uh, cashew nuts, uh, almonds, uh, do you have walnuts here? No, yes, yes. Yes. Not too much. Not too much, but almonds is the same as olive oil, by the way. Almonds, avocado, and, uh, and olives are the same. Isn't that interesting? So there's a, a good example. So what did they do right in this state, and can it be transferred to other states? It's a question to be asked to ourselves. Perhaps we could uh, look into that. But in India, they say any of these fruits with nut in it is not good. Like almond is good, walnut is not Why good. Why not? Peanut is not good because it's got very high oil content. And that's not good. Is this a cultural uh, thing or a mis uh, 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 cultural belief? Pistachios. You can have pistachios. Because it's the operative word for moderation. Yes, I agree, but that's fine. What I'm interested in is also cultural beliefs about food. For instance, in Africa, when I give them courses, you know that breastfeeding is terribly important. We all work. But the first uh, milk uh, is got the colostrum or the antibodies. And that's very important. Now, in Africa, it's regarded as something poison. So it's thrown away. So there's a health belief here which needs to be tackled. I just wonder here in the different parts of India, are there health beliefs about certain foods being bad or not given to pregnant women or not to cook? I'm sure there are. Yeah, like, yeah. And, 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 uh, and so we have to deal with this well because we said it's going to be culturally appropriate for these things. But it's very interesting. I like this example. Is this documented? Is that something we can use? This is well, based on observations considering the Commonwealth Games, the, the achievement in the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> it's, 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 it's based on how uh, the agricultural productivity of uh, Haryana has improved. And, uh, okay. If I may just ask the last, yes. last question. It's more about what you do rather than what you said. Ah. Um, since you have extensive experience in capacity building in public health, yes. I wondered whether you could share with us some, some examples of very innovative ways of, of capacity building that you may have come across anywhere in the world. Something yeah, like. well, that's a very good question. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's, 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 it's a bit of a Cinderella. Basically, capacity building is training the trainers, is working uh, to, to try and get people to be creative and enthusiastic about what they're doing in various fields. And this can be, we've done it for migrant health, we've done it for uh, trauma, we've done it for non-communicable diseases, how do we get people to change their behavior? We've done it for looking at teaching curricula in medical schools to try and bring, bring it up, up to date. Mentoring, i.e. trying to help. And the idea being, again, not top-down. These should be driven by what the needs are of the different uh, projects, the different communities. So we try and involve, the main thing is involving, working in co cooperation, collaboration, finding out what the needs are, and then trying to brainstorm creatively. We use causal modeling a lot, which is a way of trying to take a challenge and then to break it up into little groups that is measurable. Because the name of the game in the end is doing an intervention and monitoring it, seeing what, that it works, and then trying to apply it to a bigger or different population. And then the last thing, intervention, monitoring, and then it has to be sustainable, which means no point in coming with a lot of hot air and a lot of enthusiasm to a project in a school for two years, it works, and then you, you leave it and nothing happens. So you've got to and the motto is KISS, yes, K-I-S-S, -S, which is keep it short and simple, okay? So that's all, what we have to try and do with, 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 with these projects. And, and then we've got a good team. Now, this, this first time I've been to the 
this looks like a, a great place that could start uh, a healthy place going. <coughs> you said, that very rightly so, that education is so uh, important to enable people to make uh, right choices uh, on what they eat. Uh, you did mention that school is the right place to educate, but uh, an even more important uh, educator is the mass media. Uh, unfortunately, you know, and this is our experience in India, uh, ever since uh, television has uh, gone into private hands, there is very little public service broadcasting and uh, the private newspapers, privately owned newspapers, magazines or television stations are all, they just uh, uh, prostrate themselves before commercial interests and who have their own agenda. And therefore, in such a situation, I want to know, you know, from your worldwide experience, which countries have got this public service education as far as food is concerned, right? Okay. Now, you're, you're, it's moving this way. Now, that's very, very important. Thank you for raising this. We're talking about social or corporate responsibility. More and more big firms in Europe, especially, and in the States, are taking on, giving, it's peanuts, 1% or 2%, going into, um, uh, helping communities doing these projects, whether it's in the education of lifestyle, nutrition, or exercise. Um, that's the, the carrot. The stick is they use legislation, for instance, not to advertise food to kids between uh, 5 and 8 o'clock. There's no food adverts put on, so they shouldn't do it. Like, there's no smoking. Another legislation is by schools not to have. Um, machines for selling uh, Coca-Cola or sweet drinks to ban them so that we, they use the carrot and the stick approach more and more but the way to go again if you have the tattoo people here is to work with them and emphasize this thing called corporate responsibility social responsibility more and more big banks big media firms everything are saying well really we should put it back yeah. to the community I, I'd like to refer from yeah. the gentleman because I have been seeing all yes. the my voice is too loud <coughs> no, it's fine. Uh, I, I, uh, I've seen on the television yes. that they are putting up slides where they show how to take the ma mother to for uh, you know one childbirth what to feed for the first few months and all these awareness is creeping into the uh, media. Is that good? Yes, you, you mean it is good? Yeah, yes. Oh, no, well, it's creeping into the media. Yes. No, 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 you know, how's the child? She doesn't like a child, she wants a child. Oh good, so I've that is seen. good, so that's I've excellent. I've Health seen. education, that's good. I've even seen that they have said that when the child is about five months old, you've got to make something with the rice and, you know, and uh, give it to the child. That sort of food should be given for uh, for the, uh, you know, small infant. And they are trying to do it. We must uh, appreciate our I, efforts. Fine, I didn't know this. That's, that's yeah, great. I, I you mean, encourage them. Instead of just saying we are not doing, we should come I, here I, to I, do I, No, I'm, not you. I'm talking about the people who say so, that you know, every time I hear that we are not doing. But what are we doing right. to do? Okay, so that basically, positively re Madam, it's a good point. Positively reinforce. So, good NGOs and public bodies and the press responsible for should complement these organizations which are putting health, good health messages, like no smoking or whatever it is. And, 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 but that's good, I like, I like that to work on washing hands as well. Just a last question, yeah. Yes. I would like to ask you, you told about uh, the nutrition survey. Uh, you know, it's getting recorded. That's why. Right. Uh, you told about nutrition surveys uh, 
and importance of nutrition surveys. I would like uh, you to throw some light about how nutrition surveys are carried out in Israel, particularly at local levels, and how the data collected and how the inferences drawn is inculcated in the education system. I believe that we have national level nutrition surveys, but that doesn't make any sense because uh, India is too big for a country. Yeah, so, 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 so local level at community level and uh, absolutely. Yeah. We do. Well, it's, it's, it's small. It's twenty-five thousand kilometers square and it's seven million people. This is just just. Uh, Bombay and it's all of you. It would be hubris on my part to try and tell you how to do it, but basically one does need at uh, uh, different levels to have a nutritional survey. Uh, high weight, uh, exercise, dry, uh, medicate. We've done three surveys actually. We've done adult, uh, 25 to 64, over 64, second, third one children, 0 to 5, and then we've got a lot of data. It's called Mabar, Dr. Kaliski. So you can find it on the web. Um, it needs to be done in uh, most countries or every country in order to make a rational assessment of needs and doing policy. You've got to have a nutritional survey. Uh, we can talk. That's a whole lecture. Thank you for raising it. But it's time. But, uh, so I think, uh, I mean, you know, here, uh, did somebody else have a question? Okay. Okay. Sir, you said that uh, you prefer. Food and security. We have this food shepherding because food shepherding is security. Yes. If you go to GM foods, you go to fertilizer food, you go to organic food. How do you balance uh, this? Uh... That's, a, that's a hard question. There's no, there's no single answer. Uh, you try and do your best, basically. And it's food, yes. the, ma the maximum good for the maximum amount of people. What can, what can I tell you? It's, it's, it's like having a, a you know a, a, a blanket and you put everybody's pulling it. It doesn't cover everybody. Okay, I think uh, you know th this is easily one of those talks where we've had the most number of questions. That's not surprising because the this topic touches all our lives. On behalf of all of us, I'd like to thank Professor Berry for coming here and giving us this nice talk. Thank you so much. For we look forward to continue working with you on this topic going ahead. Policy is an important part of some of these things and we'll try to work with you on that aspect. Thank you. Good evening.